Hey guys, Paul from Green Dragon Hydroponics. I'm here today to share with you how to mix a hydroponic nutrient solution. And for this, you're gonna need a few things. First, you're gonna need nutrients, a source of water, also a pH meter or some sort of pH measuring device, and a PPM meter also helps. Um, to start, you wanna decide what nutrients you're using. And nutrient companies come in a lot of different forms. Usually you'll see a two-part, like this one here is a Dynagrow, comes in a grow and a bloom formula. And then um, Cutting Edge, which is what we'll be mixing today, comes in a three-part, which is a grow, micro, and bloom formula. There's also companies like Advanced Nutrients and Psycho, which have a, a four-part or like a two-part grow A and B and a two-part bloom A and B. Now obviously your, your ideal is to adjust the nutrient schedule according to the plant's needs. So uh, starting from seedling, you're using less nutrients and basically following the suggested schedule as you head into grow and then as you switch to bloom, you're providing the nutrients like phosphorus and potassium, which allow to energize and um, provide the health and structure of your fruits and flowers. So um, to start, we'll take our, take our water here and we have, um, two and a half gallons of uh, reverse osmosis water. I'll take you take a break for a second and I'll show you our RO system, which um, uh, we use to purify the water before introducing the nutrients. All right, so this is the RO unit we have. Um, this is a Hydrologic, uh, 100 to 150 gallon per day. It has a sediment filter and a pre-carbon filter that water basically is comes in here and you'll see I just cleaned it out the other day, but um, you'll see a lot of buildup come into, into here. You have to empty these out and clean it off. Um, and on these units, basically there's a three quarter inlet line that can attach to any like gar garden hose or like yeah, any, any three quarter hose connection. And that will feed your from your source water. Then you have, this is your clean water line and there's also a wastewater. Um, also a nice thing to have here is a reservoir. You can use any size reservoir. You can make fill a, a 55 gallon drum as long as you have a float valve on top that stops the water from coming in. These systems will shut on off and on automatically. So we usually keep this uh, three gallon um, filled and then just use it for small plants around the store. This is uh, one RO system we keep in stock. It's the um, Hydrologic Micro 75 gallon per day unit. They retail at 130 bucks, and um, for an entry level, it's it's not a bad price. Uh, the only thing is you could spend a little bit more and get a pre-filter if your water is especially dirty coming out of the tap, that might be a good idea, but I found these to work really well. I use them at home, so, so check those out if you're looking just getting started. All right, so like I said, today we're using a cutting edge nutrient line, and um, they do have a few other additives to their line, but we're just gonna be mixing a simple formula using their uh, Grow Micro Bloom as well as their Bulletproof Silica. Um, when it comes to an RO water, the, um, the downside to it is that because you're removing all the impurities and the, the nutrients that are contained in your, in your water source, it can be a lot more pH unstable. So um, I like to add, um, the House and Garden makes a, a pH osmosis stabilizer that kind of locks in your pH. Uh, found it to be really good for that. If you don't want to spend the money on, a, on something like that, a product like that, you could just add back a little bit of top, tap water to buffer the pH. Um, some people also, just a little bit of cow mag will help to, to buffer that as well. So when you're using this product, uh, you want to be adding it first to your water, and um, this is dilution of one mil per gallon. So I'll add this into here, about two and a half mils. I'm gonna stir that up, just let it sit for a second. When it comes to cutting edge, um, as with most nutrient lines, you want to be adding your silica product first. 
reason this is is it's the element that is most likely to bind with other nutrients if you add them in a concentrated form. So, um, so what you want to do is mix this first, wait five minutes, and totally let it dissolve and uh, in, in the solution before adding your other nutrients. As with most, most nutrient companies, you want to follow their schedule. Pretty much every company has a nutrient schedule online on their website. You can download or print out. Um, cutting edge, their Bulletproof SI is a dilution of one to two mils. So we're gonna add about uh, three mils into our solution. Mix well and then Cutting Edge recommends that you wait five minutes before adding the micro, so we'll let this sit for a couple minutes. All right, so our silica is all mixed up. Um, cutting Edge, as with most three-part nutrients like general hydroponics or advanced nutrients, you always want to add your micro in first. Um, I get a lot of questions about why, why are there so many bottles? Why do all these lines offer so many? You know, like why do I have to buy all three? You know, why can't I just use a single bottle? And like I mentioned before, there are some companies that develop nutrient programs um, that just have a two-part. Generally, they're simpler formulas um, and you don't get as complex. Uh, also, reason main reason why they break nutrients into different bottles is because if you mix them in their concentrated form, they'll bind and lock up. It, it becomes unavailable to the plant. Um, so next, like I said, we're gonna mix our micro which is um, cutting edge is easy. They recommend eight mils per gallon straight through your whole growth cycle. So eight milliliters times 2.5, it's uh, 20 milliliters. We're actually, uh, we're mixing this for a recirculating deep water culture. So generally if you have a recirculating program for your nutrient schedule, and you're running DWC or RDWC, you want to cut that cut that amount by 50%. This is something that you're going to have to get used to um, with whatever system you're running with. Also, depending on your plant, how you adjust the nutrients accordingly. 100%, I recommend that you err on the side of caution and go a little bit lighter, what they recommend, uh, because you can always add a little bit, but you can't take away if you burn your plants then you can't take that back, they're gonna be damaged. But if you don't feed them enough, it just means that they're gonna be a little bit slow growing. So, um, yeah, so we'll add our, uh, our micro in. Mix really well. And like they recommend, we'll wait five more minutes and then add our other nutrients in. All right, so now we're gonna add our grow and bloom nutrient in. Um, growth formula mainly provides nitrogen and potassium in cutting edge. The bloom will provide uh, phosphorus and potassium. Um, as you move into bloom, you're obviously using more of the bloom formula, more phosphorus for energizing plants and potassium, which is your, your quality and health trends. We're mixing actually a transition formula. Um, so flowers are just starting to pop out on this pepper plant small tiny little peppers so if you're using or if you're working with photo uh, photo period sensitive plants then this would be the time when um, you had just changed to a 12 12 cycle and you're working with still providing the plant a little bit of nitrogen to continue growing but um mainly you're gearing the nutrient more towards phosphorus and potassium so they recommend um, five milliliters per gallon of grow. So I'm gonna put about a little bit less. Um, that's another thing, always make sure that your the cup you're using doesn't have leftover nutrients in it. Mix that well. And then the bloom formula, which they recommend 15 milliliters per gallon. And we'll mix that up. All 
All right, so um, before we measure the pH, I'm, I'm going to check my uh, PPM, this uh, Blue Lab Truncheon. Um, that's a high quality uh, PPM and EC reader that um, no need for calibration. They, they cost a little bit more, but you don't have to deal with the headaches of, of calibrating, and um, they generally last forever. I had a friend who you know has had his for 10 or 15 years and um, still still measures no problem you just have to clean them in between um, take care of your your meters and they'll last a long time so uh, because it's uh, rdwc we're going to set our ppm a little bit lower than normal um, i'd expect a transition week in soil or just general um, like a drip hydroponic system to be somewhere around like a thousand um, thousand ppm 950 ppm for um, you know for most blooming plants but um, I know these peppers pretty well and they can handle a fair amount of nutrients so recirculating uh, DWC we're going to set about 850 or 900 which if you were measuring half of the nutrient solution um, that would be a, a pretty aggressive amount so um, check it and we're right at about 800 and here, I guess it's up to you where what you would want to. Um, you read the plan and decide if you wanted to add a little bit more bloom or a little bit more nitrogen into your solution. Um, I'm going to choose to kind of try to push those flowers a little bit. So we'll add a little bit more bloom bloom solution to bring up the ppm. didn't add much obviously it's easier to add than to take away so check our solution we're right about 850 so we'll stop there and then we're gonna adjust our pH so generally when testing your pH with a meter it's always good to can to make uh, to continually stir the solution so you get a good reading. All right, so right now the pH is reading at about 6.4, and um, for hydroponic solutions, um, ideal, optimal for most nutrient programs, 5.8 to 6.0. Um, generally, you're going to see a drift uh, down as the plants take up nutrients. They release exudates, which can um, can lower your pH and then you're going to be adding a pH up to to bring the pH back up to uh, where you'd like it. Some nutrient formulas um, you know have higher pH recommend higher pHs into the 6, six to 6.5 six range for hydroponics um, because cutting edge doesn't specify we're getting we're gonna set it around 5.9 before we transplant it. Alright so now we're gonna adjust the solution and add some pH down and obviously pH down is an acid so we want to be really careful handling this. Um, most important is that you also dilute the, the acid before adding it to your nutrient solution. Um, if you've ever added it in full concentrate you see a small puff of, uh, of gray that's um, essentially nutrients locking up and becoming unavailable. Uh, it's not going to totally diminish your nutrient solution but it will have an effect so that's why it's better to dilute. Also when you're diluting it take your water and then add your pH down into the water not the other way around so you have you're adding water into the pH down. Um, so now we have our diluted solution and I'm just going to slowly add some And pH down is generally a lot stronger than pH up, so you, you just really don't need a lot. And um, it's best to use a, a dropper if you have one. Because if you add too much, you swing it all the way down to 5, and now you're adding pH, uh, pH up in. And um, depending, on, depending on the pH up or down that you're using, it can be either uh, nitric acid or phosphoric acid. So when you add either of those things, it's actually adding additional phosphates 
or nitrates into your solution. So that will affect your nutrients in that way. All right, so after you've adjusted your pH, um, last thing that you'd want to add at this point is if you're adding beneficial bacteria or enzymes, uh, that's generally when I'll add these. Um, I like SOS a lot for beneficial bacteria. And then SLF100 is a really great enzymatic bacteria. Um, both help break down salts, help keep your nutrients running clean, also assist with stronger roots and nutrient uptake. So um, that's when uh, I'd add that into the solution and then you're good to go, you're good to transplant. So um, hope you guys have found this informative and uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Also, if you've uh, made it through our whole video, I'd like to give a small shout out. We're having a um, customer day June 8th from 12 to 4 at our store. So uh, come on down, we're gonna have advanced nutrients, Roots Organics, uh, Mammoth Pea, and a local company called Organic Mechanics that are uh, all gonna be set up out back. So come on down and hang out and uh, we'll be here at 12 to 4. All right, thanks a lot for watching and hope to see you on the next one.